Can a company that builds hundreds of thousands of affordable EVs every month outdo themselves and produce the cheapest new EV on the market today? I mean, look at just how small this is compared to something like the BYD Dolphin. It's tiny. But what I want to know is, is this one compromise too many to fit that price? Or do they have a little gem on their hand? If you like the Fully Charged Show, then you'll love our live events. Next up, we're in Amsterdam for Fully Charged Live Europe on the 24th, 25th and 26th of November. As you all know, we love a tiny car on the Fully Charged Show. So when BYD told me about the Seagull, I couldn't wait to try it. We're always trying to get more people out of SUVs and into different, smaller mobility solutions. It's also tipped to be BYD's best-selling world car, likely for sale in the UK and Europe, as well as Australasia and Southeast Asia and South America. This will compete on the same price basis as cheaper ICE cars and dominate sales within just a few months. So, is this the perfect Super Mini we've been waiting for? Now, I think this is a brave design direction that BYD have gone in. It's very different from the Seal, the Dolphin, and the Atto 3, but I really like it. Now, the guy who designed this car, a guy called Wolfgang Egger, used to work for a company called Lamborghini. Hmm, I wonder where he got the design inspiration for this. It's more Lamborghini and less Seagull. But I think it's really good. I like this mini Lamborghini look really sharp front end, looks great, stands out in the market. Now, these lights actually come in two flavors. So if you bought the Vitality Seagull, which is the cheapest version, you get halogen bulbs. So cheaper to make and cheaper to replace. This on our Flight Seagull, the high-end range one, comes with LED lights. Now, if you come around the side, there's some more Lamborghini design inspirations around here on these 15 or 16 inch wheels, Wheels of that size are good because it means the tyres are cheaper to replace. On the side, it looks like this seagull has been in a fight with a fruit ninja. Chop, 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 chop. But it looks good for it and it breaks up the whole mass of the side. Very different from the Nissan Sakura. But like the Sakura, this is a masterclass in packaging. Pushing the wheels out to the edge, full-size doors. Now, where the Sakura had a compromise with the boot, and a lot of these small EVs do, this one doesn't. Those familiar with the BYD Dolphin will recognize this rear end. It's, it's quite familiar, but a little bit more sharply angled. It's got the lovely LED light. And it's got the lovely spoiler as well. It has the less lovely build your dreams. Just take that off. Use a hairdryer and just take that off. Don't need that. But what we are more interested in is the boot space on the inside. So with the button down here, you actually get a pretty decent 300 liters of boot space. You can fit two proper size suitcases in there. And now if you're going on a longer trip and you only have one passenger, you can fold down those rear seats and get over 900 liters of boot space. So not only is it a good looking, practical, small super mini, but it has acres of luggage room as well. That's a win in my book. Now, of course, we're really lucky to have the top of the line flight version with all of the bells and whistles. First of all is that bigger battery. This comes with 405 kilometers of CLTC range. And that's from the 38.88 kilowatt hour battery. Now, the lesser models have the 30-ish kilowatt hour battery. It gives you about 300 kilometers of CLTC range. So I have to say that BYD's weakest point is probably its interior design. There's always something a bit weird or a little bit wacky in these interiors. I'm glad they haven't gone for the all beige, but there's always something a bit strange. Now you might be thinking, oh, in order to get to this price, they've had to make loads of compromises. And yes, there are some economization in here, especially in terms of materials. Item one, the fake leather steering wheel. Item two, lots of plastic on the dash. To be honest, it's not a big deal for me. If you're buying a car at this price, it doesn't really matter. 
but I do have some tech in here. It's not completely naked and devoid of any technology. So I have a seven inch screen here, which is nice and clear. Then I've got my 10 inch rotating screen over here. But what I like about BYD is they don't give a at the moment about self-driving tech, having the latest LIDARs and radars and all that stuff in here, which means they can keep that price down. And to be honest, 80% of people don't really need or use that stuff at the moment. Now, there is an elephant in the room. BYD, why is there a pink polka dot interior in here? I don't really know what they're doing, but I'm not such a fan of that color. I'm sure it comes in much more muted tones as well. But anyway, they've done it in here and it looks very pink. What they have done, however, is use this marine aesthetic influence. So the dashboard is like the wings of a seagull. Now to the Australian viewers of Fully Charged, they love this marine animal aesthetic. So this will be right up your street when this hit the, the roads of Australia. For me, I'm not such a fan. So this diminutive pea-sized car comes in at under four meters, 3,780 millimeters long. That's tiny. Unfortunately, in Shanghai, we can't buy it. Every car of this price has to be over four meters long in order to get the free number plate. A ridiculous thing, but that's the Shanghai rules. Outside of Shanghai, you can buy it, no problem. But for you lucky sausages overseas, you can definitely buy this pint-sized car. Now, it's also only 1,780 millimeters wide, so it really does fit in that super, super mini kind of category, but with space for four adult occupants. And here we are on the back of the seagull. Back of the seagull? On top of the seagull? Anyway, let's go away with those seagull themes. As you can see in here, it's pretty spartan. There isn't much in the way of tech or features, no USBs. I've got my electronic window, that is it. But I do have a lot of comfort and a lot of space, as you can see, my legs, my leg room is not compromised at all. They're not sticking up too high because the battery in the floor. In actual fact, this is pretty good for a small compact car. I can see out the back, I can see out the sides. It's not bad. And to be honest, it's hard to nitpick a car, which is this price when you've got all of these features inside here. The only thing I would like is maybe a USB stop for a charging, a phone charger, on, especially on the top, top of the range model. Maybe they can do that in the future but there is one wireless charger for one person's phone in the front on this model only. So it does have some features, but they're mostly in the front. In fact, for zipping in and out of traffic, this car is perfect. One thing I really like about this car is the dainty little drive mode knob. Now, usually there's some gargantuan thing down here that you have to shift backwards and forwards, but on here, it's a very, very delicate, a circular button which you just tip up with your finger to put it in reverse and down for drive. That's a really nice feature. Now the car comes with four modes, eco, sport, comfort and snow mode, which is quite interesting on a small car like this. At the moment, I think we are in eco mode, which is really the only mode that you need. And again, like most BYD cars, they haven't just stuffed everything in the screen, which I think is a bit lazy. They thought about, okay, what buttons do people want to press? The drive modes, they're down here as buttons. The air conditioning, don't have to dive into the menu, press it on and off here. So I like that part of BYD and I like how, let's be honest, they focused on the things that people really want in a car. They don't want every single tech item in the world and some people don't want everything stuffed on the screen. So well done BYD for that little feature. So then the Seagull absolutely ticks all of the boxes and makes this a truly standout car if it weren't for just one small issue. That issue being that dynamically the car is, shall we say, less than exciting. Of course, it's fine for your city driving, your motorway driving, but it doesn't fill me with fizz or excitement. But actually that's okay, and I don't mind, and I think a compact car, a super, super mini, like this, that's absolutely fine. And in fact, it dispatches with the zero to 50 kilometer an hour time in 4.9 seconds. Impressive when you consider this has a tiny 55 kilowatt motor. 
It also has 135 newton meters of torque. So it has enough oomph to get past cars in the city and accelerate away quickly enough, although it's not gonna blow your wig off. Now, if I'm gonna be brutally honest, I think the brakes leave a lot to be desired. They're a bit spongy, um, but if you're driving slowly around the city, they should be okay. We're doing some mm, faster than usual maneuvers and it doesn't fill me with confidence when I'm stamping on the brake. They're okay, but as you would expect from a reasonably priced car, they're not the best. But to be honest, these are very minor little complaints on what overall is a really, really compelling car for the price that you pay. I really don't have any other complaints. The other good piece of news is that the car is pretty quiet. In fact, when you're buzzing along the motorway and you're going at higher than city speeds, it's actually pretty good. On smaller roads like this, where you're only doing about uh, 47 kilometers an hour, it's actually very quiet as well. The acceleration is smooth. It's really simple to use, simple to drive, and I don't have any complaints around that either. My only real regret though is this car just doesn't have that extra fizz. I think a halo car with a bit more sporty suspension, maybe sporty brakes, would make it feel really good. However, unfortunately, that isn't in the works at the moment. It's built to a price and it's built to appeal to the mass market. I think there's gonna be a lot of executive sweating when this car comes out onto global markets in the next few months. But to see what I think about other BYD cars, which will make other executives sweat a lot, look at my BYD Atto 3 video here and my BYD Steel video over here.